journey 110 so i didn't post for a while now so why so this is why this is like what i've been up to a lot of things had happened you know in my life and i want to share it to you you know just a way for me of documenting this journey okay i'm still on this challenge of getting to that 27 inch waist and being super strong you know and maintaining that for life so i achieved the strength part and uh, not quite the muscle part so in a year's time what happened was i got sick and tired of looking the same you know of having the same amount of muscle mass and i'm pretty much you know ashamed of my body fat level even though i'm the strongest pound for pound so what i did is i ate 500 300 to 500 calories more than my current you know current maintenance if you if you look at it for a year so i'm averaging like 2800 to 3000 calories a day so mostly it's around 2800 so it basically got a little bit a little fatter okay not too much fat like 25 percent to 30 percent it's more of like in the 18 to 23 percent body fat category and i just realized these are the foods i'm eating you know and i just realized that it's not for me okay getting bulking hard like gaining like for every three pounds you gain you gain one pound of muscle uh it's not for me okay i don't like the look although i'm the strongest pound for pound like i can do multiple sets of my maxes now in terms of the barbell row the the pull-ups the bench you know the squat i st i don't like the look i don't like you know having a little a little bit extra on my waist before i was maintaining 29 to 30 inches pretty good like i maintain i hover at that then sometimes i go 28.5 then 28 but you know the i have the strength but you know i i want uh, a little bit of side delt development rear delt development and whatever i'm doing right now is not really producing that so you know what they say you adjust if something is not working you don't change the goal you adjust so i kind of adjusted so what if i go on a full bulk and really focus on those muscle groups i want to develop as fast as possible which is what the rear delt the side delt the bicep peaks you know my lo the long head of my bicep my calves so i did that for one year so it's been a year now that's why i haven't been posting a lot because i'm focusing on that you know along you know along with the life stress the work you know the relationships everything and you have to make it work you know i although i know that you know gaining fat is a part of that muscle building process as much as possible um it's not it's just not for me okay i think i'm more on the main gain gain tain side and you know i'm I'm more on that i'm not really a believer of the bulk and cut cycle because you have to be really working a lot one of the benefits is i enjoy a lot of social events like this you know it's the wife's birthday and we can go out and we can be i can be flexible on the meals that we're eating without you know getting too strict so we all know that whenever you're trying to bulk and yeah you can enjoy cheesecakes you know ice creams you know but 
you know I, I thought before when you're gaining like you and you're bulking you're you're gonna eat a lot of food and I, I when I'm when I'm doing it right now extra 300 500 calories it's just it's just just a small like it's just a small amount when you when you think about it unless you're eating chicken breasts and and you know low calorie dense foods but if you eat like ice creams cheesecake what 500 calories is kind of it's like two slices or one slice sometimes of cheesecakes and you can eat that if you eat some gravy you know that's how easy that's how easy when when you when you think about it that's how easy 500 calories if you consume it you know consuming 500 calories extra that's why i don't understand people when they say i can't bulk i can't gain i can't gain weight it's so easy so right now i'm maintaining at around 32 inches so it's not you know it's not fat by health standards uh, it's just you know at the borderline if you think about it if my height is around 65 inches 5 foot 5 divided by you divided by 2 it's around 32 32.5 so i'm still healthy you know i i still you know uh, look decent in some clothes so i look i i have to adjust some of my wardrobe now because the shoulders won't fit the lats won't fit so the waist it's not that bad you know I, my my pants are still you know i can still wear them so but right now the glutes really develop from all the hinging i'm doing so i can't sometimes i can't some of the the pants like i can't close it you know i can't zipper it up you know so that's that's kind of the the downside of this you have to replace your wardrobe and now i realize that this is not for me okay i'm this is not good for me long term i i have you know if, if i get too fat for example some in, on some days i i don't want to i want to see myself in the mirror like um i'm not confident with, with this weight so um i'm making these videos because i'm making a commitment I'm, I'm documenting a commitment for myself that you know it's enough okay i i i will not bulk for like this i will not bulk anymore for, uh, until you know until i die it's not for me it's it's you can still build muscle maintaining your weight so it's just a matter of progressive overload it's easier i'm not saying you, you you're you're not gonna build muscle doing it like this but it's easier okay it's because you have a lot of fuel you know if you if you want to build a house and you have a lot of materials then the house it's possible that the house can be built faster so but that doesn't mean you can build the house with little or enough materials you know it's about the builders it's about the carpenters the the engineers you know that will execute how you will arrange the materials and build the materials same with you know our bodies the engineers are our training you know our sleep sleep is very underrated you know you have sleep can can make a lot of difference in terms of you know losing muscle and building muscle plus there is a limit of how much muscle i can gain as a natural we can gain as a natural you know i'm not taking any steroids so or any performance enhancers so i would rather do it lean than fat so in short what I, what am i what am i saying here i regret okay I, I regret doing this getting to 32 inches and you know having a hard time going down so um my hopes are up um, I, I hope that i'm not 
I'm not gonna have a hard time going down again to 28 inches uh, for for like four months. So it's now September of the year, and then I, I would like to get to my previews at the end of the year, December. So that's the goal, and. I didn't post because I just want to be silent and get to the pure execution mode just like what I said on the previous update. No talk, just work. You know, you talk less, you do more. That's a, that kind of mode, you know. So now I'm averaging 2500 calories per day to achieve this, so a 300 calorie deficit. That's not the de that's just a deficit from food, okay? Now I am weighing my food, and then doing around seven to ten thousand steps. You know that would burn me around two hundred fifty to four hundred calories per day. So give or take, because you know <laughs> we're not perfect. Sometimes we don't get the steps in. So I'm 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 kind of recalibrating my lifestyle. You know, biking less. You know. Uh, using a car less parking far so that i can walk more so as you can see i'm eating still foods that are very delicious because you can control like low calorie cheese what meats you would put there is it is it a, a full fat beef you can still go out you can still uh, reserve some calories for for the dates you know if you have you know a special someone or, or, or a wife in my case so it's really a matter of like budgeting so that's what I've been trying to to accomplish now it's budgeting like pizza donuts it's high in calories so meaning you don't have a lot of room for them okay and this is the change I've been, I've been really changing around my training. I am now more flexible because of the new research. You know, if you heard about YouTube and you're watching some YouTube videos, you know, Dr. Mike Isertel, Greg Doucet, my partner, you know, uh, Jeff Nipper, the, the influencers, the, the uh, Eric Helms, the 3DMJ coaches, listening to them i'm really i really learn a lot of training you know you don't have to be exactly rigid on this is just the movements you'll do for this week you know it's not like that it's really flexible right now i'm not doing a lot of benching okay if i bench oh uh i bench because i like it you know because the most important thing in terms of muscle gain is not really the exercise you do per se it's it's really the tension you know progressive tension overload what tension are you putting in your muscles so i can accomplish the same just by doing push-ups with a very deep stretch incline push-ups or uh, feet up push-ups you know, you know, some people call it decline some people call it incline I call it incline because it mimics the incline angle of the bench so feet up push-ups elevated you know with, with the, the elevated from the floor and then you do some super deep push-ups stretching the because when you do bench the range of motion is cut when the bench touches your chest but if you do some push-ups, the weight is lighter, but you can do pauses to make it heavier, to make it harder. So I don't bench now often because of fatigue, okay? And that's really not my priority. My priority is getting my rows, my, my barbell row, or now I replace it with seal rows because of the stretch, stretch-mediated hypertrophy, okay? I, if you're reading some literature, it's really the stretch okay and yeah this is what I'm talking about the fatigue okay you don't really gain gain a lot of strength from that or, or progress a lot from that so it's not sustainable so that's what I've been doing and you know I'm now squat 
lighter okay this is not light this is very fatiguing this is almost 300 pounds so i'm avoiding that right now you can you know put a lot of tension on your quads by you know just just lessening the weight and really focusing on that forward knee travel of your of your knee forward knees so i'm not doing heavy squats like this anymore i think this is the last that i do this this is good for strength but that is not the the focus now the focus really now is to build the the quads so i'm now doing a lot of uh, cc squats okay so it is very healthy for the knees if you're having knee pain try some cc squats i can now do them weighted with 25 pounds on my hand so or, or a weighted vest 25 pounds 30 pound actually 30 pound weighted vest so for around five sets of around 15 to 20 reps you know so uh, I noticed that if I do heavy squats like this, the lifts that I wanna I wanna improve suffered. You know, for example, my my seal rows don't go up. You know, it turns out that there is overall systemic fatigue happening, so you can't push more on you know the the, the movements that you want to go up. So. That's, that's kind of the training update. I am now training on the general guidelines in terms of volume around 10, around like 10 to 20 hard sets per week. So that's kind of the ideal. I hover around 6, sometimes 10, 15 if I have more time. I'm hitting, for, actually for my rear delts, I'm trying to get 15 sets a week 15 hard sets a week why because it's stubborn it don't it doesn't grow that much on me and i'm now directly hitting them with direct rear delt exercises you know with one arm each so it takes a little bit longer so by this system you know i've been you know the fuel is good i've been eating quite well and and really doing that 10 to 20 set range of volume and i'm progressing on that volume and that's more that's an important point you have to progress on the volume you set okay it's not just about the volume it's about progressing getting actually stronger adding a rep or bettering the execution and yeah that's 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 the volume part the intensity part i am now hovering around around 7 rpe 8 rpe something like that i'm not going all the way to failure because you know fatigue you know it, it doesn't produce much gains if you always go to failure you're not gonna get strong over time so i stopped two reps shy of failure i know that's hard to gauge but if you train long enough, you will know how many reps in the tank you have. So in terms of frequency, I am trying to hit every muscle group twice a week, especially the weak points. So I average around three working, like working training days per week. So uh monday is like a weak point day so i hit rear delts side delts you know the bicep long head of the bicep calves neck you know some pullovers for extra side delt work or, or extra rib cage work so that's kind of the 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 frequency so i do that twice a week so monday and friday and then wednesday it's like a compound day so I do like my 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 pushing, my pulling, you know, two pulling, one pushing, then a hinge and a squat. So it doesn't matter what it is, 
you know it it it, it can be like a one legged squat or or good morning hip hinge movement and the hip hinge doesn't have to be deadlift all the time so it's a bit flexible so that's how i set up the frequency right now so that i have flexibility and really i the the thing that i learn about frequency is you do you you should plan ahead and you should take recovery into account because you don't want to get into a training session that is you're already sore you're still sore but the most important part still in this journey now like i what i'm always saying it's the nutrition part i have i need to dial it in so that's the update thank you guys for watching see you in the next